Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to add an external GPU to your mini PC or your laptop. Now, both of these computers that I have here do not support Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. So in order to get a full-size desktop GPU connected to this laptop and this mini PC, we're gonna be using an M.2 adapter. This is actually M.2 to PCIe X16, and we're gonna be using this ADT Link R3G that I picked up on Amazon. Now this is an awesome little unit here and it's purpose built for connecting video cards over M.2. It's got a lot of cool little features built in and I've tested a lot of these smaller M.2 adapters with different cables and things like that. This has actually turned out to be the best option that I've run across so far. Now this will work with Nvidia GPUs or AMD and I'll be testing out both in this video. So here it is, the R3G from ADT Link. On one side, as you can see here, we have an M.2 adapter. This is going to plug right into one of our free M.2 ports on our laptop or our PC. And on the other side, we have a full-size PCIe X16 slot with a mounting system and a powering system. Now, this doesn't include the power supply, but you do have a lot of options here. So we have an option to use a full-size ATX power supply. You could use SFX if you want to. This also includes two 8-pin power connectors for our GPU. But one of my favorite things about this whole unit here is the fact that they've added a pinning system here so we can use an older 200 watt Dell power supply. And these are really cheap on eBay. I picked mine up for $13.50 ship and it'll deliver up to 200 watts of power to the GPU I have installed in this unit. This Dell power supply has an 8 pin connector on one side and it's pinned out correctly on the R3G to plug it directly in and basically that's all we need. We don't need an extra ATX power supply or anything like that. All we need is one of these cheaper old school 200 watt Dell power supplies and it'll supply all the power we need for our GPU. Now when it comes to connecting this to your laptop or your mini PC, there are a few things that your laptop needs to support, like an M.2 slot, either running at X2 speeds or X4. This one happens to have two M.2 slots. One of them's running at X4, one of them's running at X2, but either way I plug it in, I'm still gonna get a big boost in GPU performance from this unit. But if you have the option, make sure you run your GPU from that X4 slot, but X2 will also do. Now, when it comes to this specific laptop, it's a Motile from Walmart with a 3500U. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM and built-in Radeon 8 graphics. I picked this up last year for pretty cheap when they were on sale, and uh, overall, it's a decent little laptop. But unfortunately, there's only one RAM slot here, so we can't get the maximum performance out of those built-in Vega 8 graphics. Another setup with this external GPU would be a mini PC. Now, a lot of these mini PCs do have dual M.2 slots, but this one here only has a single M.2 slot. But we also have the option to run our operating system from a 2.5-inch SSD or mechanical drive. So I can easily free up that M.2 slot to plug that GPU in here and run my operating system from a separate SSD. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing when we move over to this unit here. But first things first, let's start off with that Motile laptop. When it comes to choosing a GPU for a smaller laptop like this, I would go with something like the 1050 or the 1650. But for this video, I'm going to go overkill with it and use a 5700 XT from ASRock. Every time I've done an eGPU video in the past, it's always been NVIDIA. I've always had a lot of people ask me to do AMD. So here we go. So I've got the GPU plugged into the PCIe slot on the R3G. I've got a little nut here that I can uh, hold everything together with. It's got that standoff. So now we have the GPU secure. Now it's time to add power to the GPU from the dock itself. Comes with this dual 8-pin power cable, and I'll need all 8 pins for this 5700 XT. And when it comes to a GPU like this, I don't quite have enough power coming out of that Dell power supply. This GPU actually peaks out around 220 to 245, depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to limit the power on this to 80%, just so I have enough here. So I've got the video card all set up in the dock. Now I need to add my power supply and all of these pins on the dock itself are labeled. So just read through them and you'll know exactly where to plug everything in at. So this is all ready to go. Now it's time to connect the M.2 to the laptop itself. I'm just using that other free M.2 slot here. And this is actually set up really nice because it's coming out of the left hand side and I can actually set that bottom right back on this unit here. And it's got a little gap but I can always turn it over and uh, it just sits really nice and flush. So I never said this setup would be portable with your laptop, but uh, basically what we have here is the M.2 from the dock plugged into the Motile laptop itself, that free M.2 slot. 
We have power going into the GPU, our Dell power supply is plugged in, and our HDMI or DisplayPort will be coming out of our GPU to the display we want to use. Go ahead and power it up, give it a few seconds to boot, and we're now running this laptop with an external GPU connected over N.2. Now I've already got the correct drivers installed on this laptop for this GPU here, but uh, if you're doing this for the first time, make sure you get the correct drivers from either AMD or NVIDIA. I mean, believe it or not, using a dock like this actually cleans it up a lot because in the past I've had to use an ATX power supply and there's just cables hanging everywhere. All right, so let me bring up my task manager here so you can see what's going on. For the CPU, we have that 3500U, four cores, eight threads with a boost up to, I believe, 3.5. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the 5700 XT is running over M.2. It's detected by Windows, and it's ready to go. My fans aren't spinning on the 5700 XT because it has that fan stop built in, but if I go into Afterburner and this jack them up a bit, fully controllable from Afterburner, and if you had enough power supply, you could do some overclocking with this, but right now I'm kind of limited because... I'm already pushing it with this 5700 XT at 200 watts. But even if you had a laptop like this and went with a GTX 1050 or a GTX 1650, it would be a huge jump in performance and you really wouldn't have to worry about wattage with that Dell power supply because we have plenty at 200 watts for those two GPUs. Getting right into some testing. First up, Doom Eternal, 1080p, ultra settings, getting well over 100 FPS on average. It does dip down to the 90s every once in a while, but overall this is fully playable. If I was to start this game up with the built-in Vega 8 of this 3500U, low settings, 720p, maybe even 80% resolution scale, I'd get an average of around 32. Now with the next mini PC we're going to be testing in this video, I do have some recent benchmarks with and without a GPU and we'll take a look at those. Next up, CSGO, 1440p, high settings, and yeah, I'm definitely noticing a bottleneck here with that CPU and the fact that we're running over PCIe X2 with this GPU here. Because if this was connected to my main PC with a 3600X, we'd get a much higher frame rate out of it, but to be running on a laptop with an external GPU, I think it's doing a pretty decent job here. Okay, so now it's time to test out this mini PC. I swapped out the GPU, we're now using an RTX 3060 here. This is a bit different, but uh, I've got everything plugged into the dock itself. All we need to do is attach the M.2 to the free M.2 slot in the mini PC. This is the new Minus Forum mini PC with that 4500U. It actually performs really well, but uh, we definitely want some better GPU performance. So with this one here, it does support two 2.5 inch drives, and we have the SATA connectors in here, power and data. Now I need to connect the GPU dock to the M.2 slot in here. And with that installed, uh, I need to kind of figure out a way to plug this in and get everything set up. So I'll plug the SSD in. And I'd like to put the bottom back on this unit. And I think we can, at least maybe with a little bit of a gap. So if I take this and turn it the correct way, uh, I think we can snap this on. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Not bad at all. There is going to be a gap because we have that cable going into the M.2 slot, but uh, let's go ahead and plug the power in and see what happens. So I've got everything set up, and automatically those fans start spinning on that 3060. We should see that Minus Forum logo if everything's going to work correctly. And there we go. All I need to do is get into Windows and install that GeForce driver. Okay, so here we are with that mini PC powered by the 4500U. We'll go into the task manager here. And uh, one of the reasons I chose this little mini PC is because the way Menace Forums has this set up, this CPU basically will run at 4 gigahertz all day long on all six cores. And this thing paired up with this 3060 actually performs really, really well. So first thing we're going to test out here is GTA 5. We'll go ahead and get right into some gameplay. And yeah, I'm really impressed with the performance here. On average, 97 FPS, 1080p with a mix of high and very high settings. It is more than playable on a machine like this.
I also tested out Cyberpunk 2077 1080p with a mix of medium and low settings. I mean, even on my main rig with this 3060 in it, it really struggles at medium settings, so I did drop some of these down. So with this little 4500U mini PC, before the external GPU, total score in 3D Mark Fire Strike, 3013. After that 3060 was added, 17,600. Here we have Time Spy, before the GPU, 1030, after the GPU, 7,921. So it definitely makes a huge difference in GPU performance. I mean, of course it would, we're adding a much more powerful GPU to the system. So with this ADT link dock, it does make it a lot easier to add an external GPU over M.2 to your mini PC or your laptop. If you're interested in picking one of these up and that Dell power supply, we'll leave a few links in the description. Now keep in mind, your best bet for this to work properly or work at its full potential over M.2 is to run this over an M.2 slot that's running at PCIe X4 instead of X2. But even if you only have a free X2 slot, it will make a big difference. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see this dock running on any other little mini PC that I've reviewed in the past year or so, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.